world, world, well, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to It's My Show Season 5. Powered by Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra, Rahamro Hygiene Partner, Life Boy. All right, Eura Drishya Bada, Azako, It's My Show, Surwad Garu. Kalpana Garnus, Eura Kune, Antarashtya, Football, Cricket, Wa Bivine Halku Match by Raja. Rangasala, Sai the Dushat Stadium Hos, Wa TU Ground, Wa Arukure Town. Bari Barausan, Mani Sarusan. त्यहाँ न हामी जातको कुरा गर्छौं न भाषाको कुरा गर्छौं न भेषको कुरा गर्छौं न भूगोलको कुरा गर्छौं सबै जना एउटै झण्डाको मुनि हुन्छ त्यो हो नेपाली राष्ट्रिय झण्डा सबैको चाहना एउटै हुन्छ नेपालले जितोस् त्यही भएर हामी थामेनङ भन्न गर्छौं यदि राष्ट्रियता र राष्ट्रको चाहिँ प्रति कुनै चीज छ भने त्यो भनेको खेल हो त्यहाँ न पार्टी विशेषको झण्डा हामी देख्छौं न कुनै देख्छौं इट्स ओन्ली नेपाल and nothing but Nepal and Nepali pun. Aapno matri bhoomi prati ko maaya. Rayo desh bhitra mat rae na sansar bari na ishte uncha. Har ek bhekti bishes lai yedhi baadne ho bane ek ta maa. Khel dasto ramro kura aur kepani hona salte na. Udharan ko lai aajog haamro athi ti. Waa Ireland man zanmi nubo, waa cricket khel nubo, desh pachi commentator ban nubo. Tara jun maaya waa le Nepal ra Nepali cricket lai. र नेपाल र नेपाली क्रिकेटले जुन माया वहाँलाई इन रिटर्न दिएको छ त्यो अद्भुत नै छ त्यो संसारमा दुर्लभ है यस्तै कुरा होला सो यदि भनिसकेपछि मैले थप विश्लेषण गर्न पर्छ जस्तो लाग्दैन सो प्लीज अलाउ मी टु वेलकम अ गुड फ्रेंड अफ माइन एन्ड्रु लियोनो All right, mate. Welcome to my show. Yeah, thanks so much. Absolute delight to be here. It really is. We've planned this interview long back, but somehow it did never happen. <laughs> so it never clicked. So probably this is the right day, right time, and right hour, and yeah, right mood. Yeah, really is. Look, great to be here and great to be with you all. Yes, there's something missing. You're looking great. But there's <laughs> something bit missing. What What's missing? Be? Well, look, I've gone with the sort of the, the Nepali red in the tie, and then a little bit of blue in the shirt. Well, I'm pretty happy with it. I'm missing the Nepali topi there. Ah, <laughs> you're the so dhaka, used to this. My dhaka, yeah, dhaka topi. Yeah, your dhaka topi is. One of my favorites, yeah. So, and Daura Sural as well. Well, You I, look so great on that, man. That's very kind. I have to say that the comfort of that Dara Sil, well, something else. Really, really enjoy wearing Sharad, it. Sharad gave you the gift? Yeah, Sharad Dai. And uh, yeah, he's even taught me how to, to wrap it and, and put it on. It's not it's actually the easiest. It's but an art. Once you're into it, yeah. it's very, very comfortable. All right. So, let's talk about post-COVID. You've been here like 25 times, if not yeah. more? Yeah. Look, I've been here so much now. It really, I think the kind of the catchphrase that people keep clinging to is it's my second home. It, it, I've been in Nepal more than I've been in Ireland over the last what, three or four years, certainly since that COVID. That makes it your first home here. Well, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and look, I absolutely adore it here. It's it's a very, very special place, incredibly close to my heart. And uh, every time I land here, I, I kind of feel really much, very much like I'm coming home. You're every visited at least three weeks long. <laughs> so 25 into three weeks long, that makes it like you've stayed more in Nepal than your own country. Well, I tell you, the passport stamps are, they're, yeah. they're filling up bit by bit, yeah. I'm sure they know it by now that uh, once you're in the airport, <laughs> immigration, they say, oh, the cricket tournament is happening, Andrew is here. <laughs> well, often we'll get, well, I get a few people kind of wanting a few photos as well as you come through at the airport. But yeah, there's something special, isn't there, about that final approach, the Himalayas across to your left. And you take that left-hand turn, you come in and land at, at Tribune Airport. And it's, um, look, it, it's so different to where I, I originally come from back in Ireland, but... Uh, yeah, I think to, to feel at home here is a very, very special thing. We do respect, I think you're more popular in Nepal than in Ireland. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure every Irish person will tell you that. Yeah. Um, look, uh, I don't know if popular is the right word, but but certainly... They love you. We love you. Uh, oh. for, your, for your love for the game, for the people. And the, you know, we, we've taken you as a family. I'm sure you've noticed that. Yeah. Everywhere you go, you get that, you know, the uh, ownership and the belongingness. Absolutely. I, uh, it, it is, I don't know, maybe it's the, the most special thing in my life, being honest with you. Um, I don't think people could pay any bigger tribute to you than welcoming you into their home as one of their own. 
and I feel at home here. Um, the love, the, the kindness, the messages I receive, the, the, the people that stop me on the street every day, uh, it's utterly overwhelming. Uh, often very surreal, I will say as well, but the, the, the kindness, the joy and the innocence. And uh, I'm here just at the very end of that Irish Wolves tour, uh, the first ever Irish sporting team to come here to Nepal. And I think every one of the boys and all the support staff all said the same, because I'd obviously talked it up a lot to them. I was, if anything, a little bit nervous about this tour because I very much wanted them to enjoy it. And I wanted to show Kathmandu off in all its glory to them. And they loved every second of it, which which really made it made it feel even more like home for me. And uh, yeah, it's it's a place that's just always going to be so close to my heart. So your connection with cricket and your connection with cricket in Nepal, how would you define it? Yeah, look, it, it feels I don't know. I guess it feels like it's a little bit written in the stars. I've probably got Kevin O'Brien to thank, um, one of my great pals who played, you know, the best part of four hundred times for Ireland, the most capped Irish sportsman of all time. He was coming over here to play in the EPL all the way back in twenty eighteen. And I think he was looking for some company, really, when he was asking yeah. uh, the owners and, and the organisers as to who they were bringing in for the broadcast. I'd only just started. That was my first year of, of commentary. Well, kind of, my, I'd done a few streams the year before, but my first year of international commentary. That was like your real professional yeah. featuring. Big time. And then there would just seem to be this really strange and very immediate and very genuine. Don't tell me it just happened in Nepal. If there's like a bond, <laughs> there was like a bond between me and, and Nepali people uh, coming in. I, I think probably in that first first tournament I came for, I got sent to the crowd quite a lot. And the passion for cricket here is so extreme and so incredible that I, I think oh, it's, it's it's next level. Yeah. And and it's it's not just unique to, you know, Nepali cricket, but it's really unique for the associate game. There's nowhere else in the world that follows the sport and, and loves it like they do here in Nepal. With this passion. And I have a huge passion for cricket. My life has been cricket. Yeah. Being honest with you, Suraj, without cricket, I have no idea what my life would be. And I'm very grateful for that every day. And, and now to be doing the thing that I feel I was born to do, I feel I was born to be a cricket commentator. Uh, I love doing it. I, I get uh, such a, a buzz from doing it. Uh, hopefully people that listen get a, get a sense of that passion and that energy that I have for the sport and that love that I have for the sport, particularly the developing nations in the game. And uh, yeah, it, 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 it's kind of surreal because it feels like it's, it's the strangest thing of all time being so welcomed here and, and feeling so at home here, but it feels like the most natural thing in the world too. Yeah, I mean, like you enjoy both on and off the field. <laughs> We've seen your post, your social media, yeah. and your stories and everything. You're all over the places. I mean, like from the gullies of Kathmandu, you're having local food, you're chatting with kids out there, you're playing cricket. So this is so home, right? Yeah, very much so. And I think, I think the biggest message, I suppose, for people watching out at home, maybe some people watching from overseas, this city is incredible. Often people come to Nepal as tourists and they come purely for trekking. So they'll come to, to go to up Annapur Annapurna base camp or to go to Pokhara for some trekking or, or up towards EBC. But the reality is this is an incredibly vibrant, special and, and developing city. Yes, it has its challenges. Of course it does, like so many parts of this part of the world. But the energy, the positivity, the joy and the innocence, uh, every single place I go. A friend of mine who came with the Irish Wolves described it in the following way. I can't claim it, but I think it's a really good way to describe it. It's like when you peel back that first layer, you almost reveal the beauty that's behind it. True. All of the best parts of the city are, are down a little secret alleyway or in under a, a little small uh, Nepali door that you enter. And uh, yeah, the food, the, the cafes, the, the music in particular, the culture, uh, the kindness, the respect. I, I just love this place. So where are we where are heading after the show for the bar? So, <laughs> <laughs> well, look, there's the occasional beer enjoying the evening here as well. And that's, I think that's something we share as Irish and Nepalis. Um, beer lovers, uh, yeah, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I love it across in Lalitpur, Sanepa, you know, uh, Jamsakil, but you know, Durbar Marg and Tamil, equally as enjoyable as well. All right, you remember the first encounter you and me together, brother? 100%. What was this? How could I forget? I'm going to say... First ODI? First ever ODI on Nepali soil. Nepal, Oman and USA. The Tri-Series for Cricket yeah. World Cup League 2, February 2020. And you mentioned COVID already, just yeah. before the world changed. Yeah. yeah. And then suddenly a guy comes to me as a broadcaster director, I was there and said, like, I want to be part of it as a volunteer, and I said, like, I'll oh, always do it, and then the rest is history. 
Yeah, look, I remember vividly meeting you, actually. I didn't really know what to expect broadcasting international cricket here for the first time, because obviously it is a, a slightly different standard of expectation. The, the franchise stuff I'd done here previously, it was a little bit manic and a, and a little bit full on, but that was all kind of part of the beauty of it. It was part of the brilliance of, of what, what those leagues are here. Then but, you saw Gandhi Boot production. Yeah, and then I came in and, and you guys, well, you absolutely rocked it. And <laughs> those broadcasts, those pictures went all around the world. I think th there's a very very close to an all-time ODI record that included sure. in there. Yeah. We had a short day that day. USA yeah. were bowled all yeah. out for 35. <laughs> we just wrapped it up. Yeah, all right. it was quick, done. A quick games are good games sometimes. So what is Andrew without cricket? God, it's a good question. I think right now, cricket takes over so much of my life, it's hard to explain. What if I take cricket out of your life? Then what's <sighs> left? Look, I'm a very happy person. I'm a very lucky person. Um, I've traveled all over the world with and without cricket. Um, I did nothing but sport my whole life when I was younger, when I was growing up, and, and really cricket was the one that always captured my imagination, my attention. Um, I think primarily because of Caribbean cricketers. I used to watch the West Indies yeah. when I was five, Back six, seven days, years Brian old. Back in Brian Lara, Courtney Walls, yeah, absolutely. Courtney Ambrose, Kurt, Courtney Ambrose, Ambrose, all these guys. Yeah. For me, it was it was also about Malcolm Marshall and and Viv Richards. You know, yeah. these guys walking out in a way that we didn't have in Ireland. Ireland was a kind of dark and grey and dreary country in the 1980s, and then all of a sudden, I saw the brilliance and the athleticism and the quality of these Caribbean guys beating England. And if anyone beats England for an Irishman, that's yeah, good That's, that's good with us. You're done. Exactly. You're done we, for we've the fallen in love already. <laughs> so, yeah, you know, the Welsh rugby team, and when, when Ireland managed to beat them, you know, we, we love that. But but for for the, the Caribbean boys, the, the maroon caps, the swagger, that just captured my imagination. And then I guess from there, I, I almost applied everything in my life into cricket, probably a bit too much. And then was so lucky kind of at the age of 19, 20, 21, when I, I didn't quite make it as a professional. I spent a couple of years at Hampshire, played some Irish 19s with, with some great, great cricketers like Sir William Porterfield and, and Kev O'Brien, I mentioned, and, and Boyd Rankin, great friends of mine. Um, but yeah, from there, I, I think to have done what I did really made me. I, I went away for four years. I traveled. I, I had almost no involvement in cricket, really, at that point. I spent two years in, in Chicago with my four best mates, who are still my four best mates. Uh, we caddied at a golf club in Medina. We... We did a little bit of caddying, we earned some cash money in our hand and we did quite a lot of drinking, being honest with you, Siraj. And, and we went to the University of Life and yeah. we loved that so much. We went and did two more years uh, through through Australia, uh, coming back, traveling through Asia. That was with, with, with my girlfriend at the time and, and all those great friends. Um, at one point, I think there was eight Irishmen, seven, seven of my best mates and, and my girlfriend. So seven guys and one girl in a small nomad uh, camper van. And we drove all the way from Melbourne to Perth across the wow. Nullarbor. So look, Crazy. We, we did it all. We learned so much at those times. And then I guess coming back from that, it was then, well, God, what do I do with life? I, I, you know, I, I'd What's been, left? I'd been to university, <laughs> I, I, but I had to sort of take on reality. And I, I didn't, have really want to start reality. So I threw myself back into cricket and then uh, firstly through a bit of playing again, some coaching, some tutoring, then some administration. I've now found the my way to- and all this stuff. Yeah, happened. exactly. Was very lucky to work for Cricket Ireland with some great people and onto ICC in Dubai, yeah. So did Nepali tournament in Nepal actually expose Andrew to the world? God, that's a good question. Um, I, I don't think I, I'm, I don't think I'm that well known to be exposed to the world yet. Maybe I am. I've got who knows. Um, quite possibly, the, uh, there's a huge you're, difference. You're somebody from me. with zero haters in Nepal. Do you know that? They just they just love you for you who you are, what you've done. Yeah. I especially vividly remembered you were in the commentary box, and when Nepal won, you had tears in your eyes. Yeah. Um, and that was surreal. It wasn't that fake. I mean, like, who does that? But Andrew. Look, the, the scale of love and kindness I receive is genuinely overwhelming. It's the only word I can find to describe it because it's so genuine and it's so kind. Um, and look, yet yeah, I'm, I'm not on that platform that I think is now being banned here in Nepal. I'm not on TikTok myself, but people have shown me stuff on TikTok that I've seen yeah. and, and I didn't even know that it was to that scale. I really didn't. And there, there is something about covering a sport that means so much to so many people um, and seeing the background stories of those players, what they've been through and, and what they've, they've come from to get to what they're doing now and the way they're representing the country and, and the brilliance of them. They're such great ambassadors for this country, which is a great country. And then when you're narrating that story and you, and you see the scale of joy from the fans 
and then the scale of passion from the players and the two come together, it, it can be totally overwhelming. I'm an Irishman. I've been somehow taken in by this country. Um, we're known to wear our hearts in our sleeve. Uh, I'm half Mediterranean as well. My mum is, is a wonderful Greek woman who, who had to emigrate after the war and, and, and found her way to Ireland by complete chance. So they're known as being emotional as well. <laughs> so you take an Irishman, a Celticman, who's got some Greek blood in him, and that, that's just, I guess, the perfect storm of an emotional mess. And I love this sport so much. And then seeing what it means to this country, firstly, when they, they, they went on that run and, and, and qualified for Zimbabwe with those 11 wins from 12 in front of 30,000 people in the fading light against the UAE on March 16th, and then almost maybe topping it by, by qualifying for a first Asia Cup. Uh, yeah, th there was a couple of points where I, I just couldn't talk and it was all too much for me. You know, as a commentator or as a sports uh, host, you're supposed to be neutral, but mm. you're a little partial when it comes to Nepal. You, you, your heart is with Nepal <laughs> <laughs> and it shows. I think some people think that I, I try really hard, genuinely, to stay neutral um, as a big part of the job. It really is. And, and I think you need to bring that passion and excitement for both teams whenever and whatever is happening. Um, I, I guess there's such a bond and a connection between me and Nepal fans that they will always feel I'm cheering for them. But I, I promise you, I'm cheering for great cricket. Mm. And if it, if I had it's, like, there was the a love lot of, for the sports, exactly, not and, the team, exactly. And there was a lot of joking when Nepal played Ireland in the Cricket World Cup qualifier. I know both sides were out of yeah. qualification at that point last year in Harare. They were all there was these brilliant memes I was seeing of <laughs> I think there's a Bollywood movie of a of a guy on a bike with his legs being stretched further <laughs> exactly. together and they had the Nepal yes. logo. Where and does the, Andrew go? <laughs> Yeah, and I was like, God, where do I go? But honestly, as long as the cricket is good and the players are performing, I'm happy. And, and one of our, the big parts of our job is to make heroes of these players. Sure. And I think hopefully that's something that, that we do really well. And, and you think of the journey of this team. I had a great story told to me not too, too long ago about, you know, five, six, seven years ago, the Nepal national games were barely being broadcast. Yeah. If they were lucky, the occasional game was broadcast, so there were some highlights. Yeah. Now, every game is live on the likes of Kantapur and, and all around the world. Mm -hmm. The ICC and the ACC have done such a brilliant job at, at finally bringing... We're into the mainstream now. Yeah, shining a light on the associate game. And I'll tell you something, the standard bearer for the associate game right now, in terms of love of the sport, culture of the sport, right here, it's here in Nepal. Scotland may have, may have won the league the last time, the Dutch may have flown the flag at the World Cup, but the potential here is unlike any other the boys are doing country. too well, too mm. good. All right, so we'll talk more on this for now. We'll go for a commercial break. All right? Happy now, days. After the break, more on this. Thank you. Enjoy the break. Ladies and gentlemen, the man himself, my good friend, brother, <laughs> might, what you call it, Andrew. Yeah, my great, All right. my great pal. How are you? Yes. So let's talk about the 12th man, the fans, not only in the stadium, but watching us TV scattered mm. all over the world. How do you rate Nepalese fans when it comes to love for the game cricket? Well, look, every single person here, every, every fan, every person who's born Nepali, I think, has a passion for cricket. I think the great thing is it's not just the 12th man anymore, is it? It's the 12th player. There's so many women and girls getting involved. I think of the difference between when I first came here six years ago. The crowd was really 99.9% .9 men, but we're getting families in through the gates yeah. of the TU It's now. like a festival right oh. now. You bring your food and enjoy. You know, the stadium is such... Yeah. It, it, it gives that... You know, South African, Australian feel. <laughs> the vibes. You know, the vibes. I, I think it's the only show in town. When the national team are playing, the hearts of the nation, the eyes of the nation are, are focused on, on that. And look what, what the men's national team now have coming up with the Premier Cup and then into the, the World Cup, the return to the World Cup for the first time in a decade. I just think there's such a chance really to galvanize the nation, not just in a sporting context, 
not just in a in an uplifting sense. It, it, there's so many similarities. I've said this a couple of times before, but Ireland and Nepal share a huge amount. You know, we're both in the shadows of bigger nations around us. Okay. We're in the shadows of, of the United Kingdom. You're in the shadows of two, actually, in India and China. Um, and India, when it comes to cricket, is like the biggest. Oh, yeah, the, 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 the biggest there yeah. is. But 30, 40 years ago, we were very much a developing nation on the fringes of Western Europe, almost an outlier, uh, you know, with very little kind of economic growth. And then our national football team qualified for the World Cup in 1990 for the very first time, the Republic of Ireland. And that was known as Italia 90. People, they sold their cars, they remortgaged their houses just to go and watch. Oh. And it was it was kind of, some economi economists think that that actually sparked the Celtic Tiger that followed, which was a real economic surge and boom. I believe that much in these boys that I think this could be transformative for the country. Going out to the USA where there's such a Nepali diaspora, there's a huge amount of people there. The, the first game of that tournament for Nepal is already sold out. I can guarantee you there won't be much Dutch fans okay. in Texas. There'll be Nepali fans. Yeah. And then down to Florida, onto the Caribbean. They might not get through the groups. They might not go to the semifinals. They might not win the thing. That's not the point. Yeah. I think they can really lift up the hopes of this nation. And hopefully it will be a, about an awful lot more. You've been to multiple stadiums. Yep. Multiple tournaments. Big names both on the field, off field, the ambience, the culture of cricket, you've seen all over the world. How do you define Nepalese cricket culture? Well, I think it's unique. I, I think the passion that the people have, you can feel it. You can really feel it when you're here right across the country. Took a trip recently down to Bairawa and got a real hub of the game down in the Terai region there. You think of the players that have come from Bairawa, from Butwell, there's such talent across the country. But it really is the national sport here. It's the one thing that captures everyone's imagination and everyone's attention. Are you on the right track? Absolutely. I think that's an affirmative yes for so many reasons. You're really only as good on the pitch as you are off the pitch. And I think after many years of difficulty and, and some political strife, things finally off the field are really moving in the right direction. There's no other associate in the world that is playing as much cricket in 2024 as, as Nepal are. Yeah. We've just seen the announcement of West Indies A coming. We've just had the Irish A side here. There's going to be, you know, we saw them down in India uh, winning a trophy again, Rohit Powell lifting that there. Mm -hmm. They've already hosted the first series of Cricket World Cup League 2. We had a PM Cup with more games than ever in January. The women's and youths programs are developing more so than ever. So there's a lot of awfully good things happening. I think critically as well, the success of the boys on the pitch is sparking a lot of corporate interest. You see now yeah. they've all got sponsors. Yeah, the brand endorsement, oh. they're making good money. And that's brilliant, that's good to see. Yeah. That, that means- It came in quite late, but at least it's there now. Exactly. It's, it's beginning. Success breeds success. Sure. And that's what's happened. And, and it's always for me, even when I was at ICC, and this is a little tale I've told before, but you'll love this one. 2014, I was appointed somehow, I still don't really know how, as the digital manager for the ICC. I looked after all of their, their uh, online platforms, their social media, I helped build their app, uh, all of their online video. It was a really big role and something I loved. I threw, my, threw myself full on to 16, 18 hours a day for three years. Loved every second. Went to World Cups in Australia and, uh, and in India, the T20 World Cup, Carlos Brathwaite hitting those sixes. But in 2014, my first year there, I remember digging into the website and the analytics. I think Nepal had some kind of a, a, an associate pathway game. No broadcast, no highlights, just a live scorecard. Our website crashed. The ICC's website crashed because of the scale of Nepal traffic coming in, clicking, yeah. clicking, trying to see the scores. And, and I went to my boss and I said, you won't believe this, the website's down. And she said, why is that? And I said, I think it's the Nepal game. And she said, ah, no, 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 come on. It can't be. It can't be, it can't be yeah. And sure enough, when we looked into it, the Nepal fans had crashed the servers. So we had to boost them up. And immediately, it, it wasn't then just since then. The game. But I knew. I knew that there was something. You looked at the traffic numbers, that the passion for the sport here. Yep. Yeah, second of them. What's missing in Nepalese cricket, Andrew? What do you think? What's missing? <sighs> I, I would say, and, and something I, I saw very recently down in Barawa, a new facility. I think facilities are so important. Mm -hmm. And something we battled with in Ireland, cricket's still a minority sport back in Ireland as well. You need grass wickets, you need training nets. You in a dream world, you, you need those to be used all day round, so you need them to be lit. Uh, you want uh, AstroTurf facilities, you want indoor facilities so you can train when the monsoons are on. And, and some of the progress now, that, that oval down in, in, in Barawa is sensational. The extra tech oval has come in, I think, 10... Because, let's be honest, half the year, because of monsoon, cricket is almost dead. Well, four or five, four months probably you yeah. can't play. So there are so many facilities starting to come up now. 
that historically maybe have been promised and not quite come to fruition. It feels now that they're tangible, that they are coming along. The, the TU is, for me, always going to be the spiritual home of the game here. I adore that ground, it, its natural grass banks, the way it's yeah. weaved into the dada, the hills that surround it, and, and the beauty of the venue. It's, going, it's, it's like going for a meditation. Oh, yeah. couldn't agree absolute more. Absolute meditation. Yeah, and, and it, is, it is very much like a tonic, isn't it, to the soul when you go there. Anyone who loves cricket, just up towards Kirtapur, the Tribuvan University International Cricket Ground. I adore it there. But again, that, if that could develop on, if you get more training facilities there, you know, can you imagine floodlights there one day, what that would do? People here, you know, again, you'll know you're from Nepal. People work six days of the week here. They, you know, often they'll give up a day's work to go watch the yeah, cricket. Yeah. Floodlights come they'll in. They'll bunk the school, they'll bunk the college <laughs> office, they'll just um, call a sick leave and then just I've be, seen it. be on the stadium and then your bosses see you on screen and they're like, bloody, why are you there? You see the posters sometimes, please don't show this, the boss is going to see me. <laughs> they're going to see that I'm, I'm not supposed to be at work. But yeah, look, the facilities, you build up those facilities. What else? Sudden, what else? Besides facilities? The talent is here. Yeah. The talent is here in abundance. You breed spinners for, for fun. I think certainly the fast bowling ranks could do with being stocked up. And, but again, some of that is genetic. You don't necessarily have a lot of young cricketers with a big, strong height. That Irish Wolves team that was here had uh, three fast bowlers, all were six foot two and, and very, yeah. very strongly built. Gulshan Jha is starting to book that trend. He's starting to bowl quick. Um, and he's got all of the, the assets that you would like. I'd love to see cricket in, in every school in the country. I, I'd, I'd love to... From the grassroots. Oh, 100%. Yeah. And it, it, I think one of the things sometimes... And not confine it to Kathmandu, but then spread it out. Yeah, all, all 70 plus provinces all across the country. I would love to see that. And sometimes people think about cricket facilities and they go, oh, well, we have to build a stadium. That isn't always the case. You can build a, a three-lane outdoor facility, yeah. a four-lane indoor facility. You can build a, a fielding surface. You can build really good uh, turf practice areas. That's almost as important. And then for the schools, get it in there with plastic bats, with balls. Make it compulsory on, on, yeah. on, on the curriculum of the schools. Just expose the game to them and exactly. rest, they decide it. Exactly. Yeah. You have such an opportunity here to become the next test nation. Yeah. Batting, bowling and fielding. The, Out of these three components, our strength, according to you, and, and the compartment we need to <laughs> rework on, rethink on, and then carry it. Look, the strengths, there's no doubt, spin bowling. It always has been historically, you seem to breed left arm spinners for fun, Shakti Gauchan, Vasanta Regby, through to the, the brilliance now Sandy, of, Sandy. Of, of, of Lalit Rajbanchi, you know. And look, for me, the batting has got so much better. Uh, Monty Desai has brought the most incredible True. consistency. He was here a couple of weeks and I, I admire this gentleman. Uh, very special. Yeah. You found a special human. And with due respect to Monty, what, you, what I think the, the cricket board need to be praised for, they didn't hire a name. Monty is, is a wonderful human. I know him so well. I, I did my level three coaching course with him in Edinburgh. I've known him for, for 13 years. Now we're here together in Nepal. It, it's wonderful. It's a, a beautiful uh, symmetry to the journey. But so many associate sides will go, oh, well, if we're going to get a head coach, we'll have to get a, a ex-former player from Australia, India, England. And often it ends up being a calamity yeah. because they have no understanding of, of what associate cricket is like, the cutthroat nature of it, how competitive it is, how good it is. But Monty Desai has taken a wonderful journey through his life to become the kind yeah, of the man... The best thing that has happened to modern cricket in a ball. Oh, 100%. So the board deserves great praise for hiring him and then him bringing his, his spirituality, his charisma, his, his sort of methodology to the team and the way they've embraced that. The humble approach, I call it. Exactly. And he's such a humble man. Right. Um, and he's a kind man and uh, I continue to learn from him. And I tell you that the openness that he has in terms of speaking to me about things as well, there's not many head coaches in the world who would come to the commentator after the game and say, look, can you talk to me a little bit about where you think we went wrong here? Or do you see anything in player X or Y? He's a, he's a remarkable man. All right. You've been here multiple times. You come, stay. I'm sure there's money involved, finance involved, <laughs> you know, expenses. Yeah. The only thing is, get married to a Nepali girl. <laughs> it's going to be a lot easier. <laughs> well, I'm sure I, I heard, somebody told me, you have had a lot of proposals. Don't listen to these rumors, Suraj, come on. You're better than that. Don't listen to rumors. <laughs> That's what I said. See, when I sit on this chair, I'm not your friend. <laughs> you hear everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm media here, all right? When I go there, we go for a couple of drinks, then I become your brother. That's fine. So is it true? You've been, you've been proposed 
Multiple times? Um, uh, look, a lot of female fan followings? Firstly, a gentleman never tells. All right. uh, and, and secondly... Be a nasty uh, guy for now. <laughs> never, never, that's not within my makeup <laughs> at all. Uh, look, I, I get some pretty incredible messages sometimes. Yeah. Uh, there is there's nothing but joy and innocence in, in the vast thought? majority of them. You never know. You never know. Look, I, um, uh, I think going into my private life and, and whether I'm single or not and getting into detail. Trust me, brother. I'll Nepal keep, is your, keep, Nepal is your lucky mystery. charm. Uh, well, everything happens in Nepal for Andrew. It happens for good. <laughs> well, I'll tell you something. There, are, there are beautiful people here, and there's beautiful spirits to people as well. But for now, I'm going to take the fifth and and, and tell you nothing at all. All right. <laughs> so, what's what's the most beautiful thing about Nepal for you, besides cricket? Let's talk. Let's. Come out of cricket for a while. Yeah, absolutely, and and that's something I'm very big on, and something I was big with that Irish squad that were just here. I asked Pete Johnson and, and Ryan Eagles and the management, could I speak to the boys before they they literally bowled a ball in the series? They said, please, because we're a little bit out of our element here. We don't know what to expect. And I said, guys, the biggest thing I want you to take away from this trip. The cricket will look after itself. It will be excellent. I've no doubt it'll be competitive. You'll learn a lot. I want you to enjoy it off the pitch because this is a special place. And luckily they did. What I love about the city really is its people. And that's the entire country, in fact. Just come back from the most incredible couple of days down in Barawa. Um, and I've got to start getting out there more, being honest. Often the schedules make it difficult because we come in and, and modern cricket is, is so squeezed that we, I'm here for three weeks and I might have two days at the start and two days at the end. And usually I'll want to go see my dentist or catch up with a friend that I have in the city. So getting out down to Pokhara or, or getting up to, to go for a trek is not going to be easy. But look, the thing I love about this country is its people. They are the, the kindest, most humble. You occupy 24-7 people. With or without the game? Mm, 100%. With game, you're all right there. <laughs> as long as the match is over, then you come out, you're equally busy. I mean, like you're meeting somebody or the Always. other, you, you have multiple meetings, traveling. <laughs> and traveling, you got to get in the back of a bike. That's yeah. the key here. Yeah. You get into a car, you get stuck in traffic. So I love getting on the back of a bike and yeah, just exploring, spend a lot of time over across the river here in, in Lalapur and in, in Sanipa. I love it over there. It's a really sort of chilled area. But then certainly when I, I want to go out and enjoy a few drinks, get down to... Yeah, when you go to, to a Tamil restaurant there. or a bar or a pub, how do people react to it? You're a very popular guy here in Nepal. <laughs> uh, yeah, look, I think every time I come back, it gets it gets bigger. More, yeah, it seems to get more and more. But I have never had one negative interaction, not that I can think of once. Um, and everyone I meet, all they ever really want to do is is first say, say, do you take say namaste. Uh, I, I would take quite a few, yeah, <laughs> being honest with you. Uh, but quite often, if they don't want to photo, and some people don't want to photo, they want to tell you. Uh, they want to thank you for coming to Nepal and for what I've done for Nepal. And that is often what I what I find. I'll be having the most normal day in history. I'll be walking down to the barber to get a head shave. And so, like, I won't even be making eye contact with someone. Someone will stop me and say, uh, they'll either say, quite often they'll say, Taklu Dai. <laughs> the nickname seems to be spreading, which I love my, in reference to my, my boldness. Uh, so, yeah, they'll say, they'll say, Mr. Andrew, sir. And they will then tell you uh, often quite a deep story about why they, they really love me coming to Nepal and what, what I mean to Nepal to them. And I, I could be absolutely on a different stratosphere. And, and the words that people say to me regularly overwhelm me. I'm sorry to go back to that word, but it is, it's unlike anywhere else in the world. And you've got to remember, Suraj, like I'm so lucky now with what I do. I travel all over the world. I've commentated at big ICC events, did my first ICC World Cup this year, did the Cricket World Cup qualifier last year. Um, and, and I'm, I'm really loving what I'm doing. And I'm, I did my second test match this year, just last month. But there's nowhere I go but here where, where people stop me all the time and, and thank me for coming. And that's what means for me, Nepal is always going to be the most special place yeah. in the world. We love Taklu Dai. <laughs> yes. On that note, going for a hammer, second commercial break. <laughs> Welcome back, man with zero haters, and we all 
<laughs> love him and call him Taklu Dai. Nepali Taklu Dai. That's right. Um, the zero haters thing, I, it, it, it blows my mind. I think it worries my mum awfully. My mum looks at, she looks at everything I do and she reads through the comments and she goes, why is no one saying, Andrew, God, come on now? You know, or she, she'd be like, why are they all positive? And then uh, my friends, they get the biggest kick out of it, particularly my non-cricket friends who don't understand yeah. at all what this, this special relationship is. Is it for real? It <laughs> feels surreal. It absolutely feels surreal. But um, look, it, I think I've grown to start to accept it and understand that actually there is a, a really special relationship between me and this country. And, and I will never stop coming back as long as people will right. keep wanting me to come. All right, let's compare. You're walking down the street in Kathmandu, you're walking down the street in Ireland. <laughs> Who takes more selfies? Who comes to interact more? Well, I, I can guarantee... Who praises you more? I can guarantee you now there'll be people back home in Ireland watching this. They'll be laughing. They'll be rolling around their couches <laughs> going, Ado, hold on. We love Lenny. We, Lenny's a great lad, but no one knows who Lenny is. <laughs> no, look, it, it's, look, it's chalk and cheese. If I'm back home, Dublin, where I grew up, um, I'll obviously know family and friends, but come on, cricket's, cricket's not a big thing there. It's massive here. And um, yeah, that's a unique relationship I have here in Kathmandu. All right, so let's look at a few pictures of yours. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Right. God, what, what have you dragged out? Yeah, let's recall <laughs> good old memories, bro. Yeah, All fantastic. right, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> so you asked me for one of my youngest photos <laughs> and I had to ask my mum, I called Sophia, my mum is called <clears throat> Sophia. And I said, Sophia, can you find some early photos of me? And she's taken them. That is me, I believe, on my first day of school. St. Andrew's College, uh, South Dublin. I don't know about the haircut. I've got to blame the mother for that. Uh, that is my hair before people are like, <laughs> that is me. I yeah, used to I, have a yeah, hair too. That, that, that is me. I was quite blonde when I was a kid, actually. And then I ended up being very, very, uh, now black, well, did have black hair before it's all gone. But yeah, uh, incredibly happy days. I think that's in Booterstown, in Green Road. What do you want it to be? I mean, we all have dreams, you know, inspiration and everything. My life has taken the most remarkable path. It is... My mother says to me all the time, I keep up going back to my mum and my dad, but my mum says to me, you are anything but boring, you never were. And your life is anything but boring. And actually, the more I think about that, I hate normality and regularity. I would hate to be just doing a nine to five job. And yeah, I guess that there's gonna be plenty more twists and turns. What I wanted to be when I was younger, I, I can't remember, but I was obsessed with sport from a very young age. All right. There's the big one. Yeah, that's my dad, uh, Mark Leonard, uh, champion of a guy. Um, our family had no background in cricket. We, we started playing in a front garden with a two by four and a tennis ball. And I badgered my parents to, to ask them to allow me to join Pembroke Cricket Club. The only reason we knew about it was there was a train line that went by it. Look, we had no connection at all. My, my eldest brother was in Trinity College and he, he saw it going by on the dart and on the train in Dublin. He said, I think there's one there. And I wanted to join when I was six, they wouldn't let me. And finally, I think I was seven, uh, just turned seven in the summer of 1991. I got brought down to Pembroke and I never looked back. It's, it's probably my, in, Ar in Ireland, it's my second home um, in Sydney Parade. And my dad, who worked so hard to keep us afloat as a family throughout his life as an architect, um, through some tough times in Ireland in the 80s, being honest, some really yeah. tough times, early 90s too, he never missed a game. I don't know how he did it. And um, yeah, I'll be forever grateful yeah. for that. Yeah. Jesus. <laughs> the biggest that you can get. Um, yeah, I don't think I've sent this one. You must have found this one. Um, you look nervous there. I, it probably was a wee bit nervous. I've got a bit more used to Obviously, the, the line right now. you're with Sachin Tendulkar. Yeah, that's at the Cricket World Cup in, in uh, the MCG in 2015. Uh, and Sachin, I'll tell you something of all of the cricketers in the world, one of the most humble men you'll ever meet. I was interviewing him for ICC as it was part of my job. The reason I was interviewing him, um, he was an ICC and specifically uh, uh, you, um, uh, excuse me, a Cricket for Good ambassador. Yeah. Uh, and I think UN Goodwill ambassador. UN, that's exactly, UN Goodwill ambassador. So he's, he's a huge um, advocate for children, particularly in, in, in the Southern Asian Southern region. Asian. And he's done so much work with that Cricket for Good program for the ICC. And I, I cannot explain how giving he was and is, continues to be with his time. Yeah, 90,000 India fans, MCG. I, I think they beat South Africa that day, if I remember correctly. And, Who's your uh, top yeah. three cricketers, both in terms of batting, bowling? Who's your my favourites? Yeah. Or, or All over the world, yeah. My favourites? Guys, look, I, hard to look past Viv Richards, growing up with. 
Yeah. Shane Warren, what a, what a loss to the sport at the age of 52, still mourn him to this day. Uh, was lucky enough to do have a few interactions with him over the years. And yeah, look, it's probably hard to look past Sachin, isn't it? Although my personal favourite growing up was a, a little crabby left-hander for the West Indies called Shiv Narayan Chandrapal. Yeah. Oh, I love this guy. No, Remember what the, he yeah, used to yeah, take exactly. the bills out? Yeah. And then the reason I loved him, I was very short when I was growing up. You saw me there with my dad. I, at the age of 16, I was still five foot four. I'm, I'm over six foot now. And I grew very late. So when I was watching Chandrapal when I was 14, 15. Very lean guy. He was five foot five. Very he lean. Walked, he walked out on his test debut in, te in pads that were too big for him. <laughs> they were almost up to his belly. I think he got a 50 against England yeah. on debut. I loved him my and whole And his life. typical style of taking the bells out yes. and taking them out. Unorthodox as All well. Right. Yes. Yeah. There's... More ICC work, yeah. Uh, Shikhar Dhawan, uh, Virat Kohli, the, maybe the biggest star of the, of, of the modern game by a distance now. And, and uh, Dinesh Karthik there to his right, isn't it? Uh, yeah, that was for the official tournament launch for the T20 World Cup in India in, I uh, reckon it was Mumbai, December 2015. And up there doing a, yeah, a Twitter mirror on stage. I think my boss forced me to go up. I didn't want to go. One of the big things and the big changes I've had to make in my life is my, my three years at Cricket Ireland, my three years at ICC, I was an administrator at Cricket Ireland, amazing three years working with the team on that path to test status. Then same in ICC, putting on these brilliant ICC events around the world. We were always very much told and I was very much comfortable in the background. We weren't the limelight. We weren't the story. You're, you're, you're a worker your job to be in the background. So it's a little ironic to now do what I do and, and very much have the spotlight on me. But I remember being awfully uncomfortable of stage. We'd explained uh, to Virat how to use it before and he nailed it in one and that, that photo. But now you're used to it. It's like, uh, now it's, but, it, it's actually it's second like nature. There's, it's amazing. If you don't go there, you get panicked. <laughs> <laughs> There's a bit of that. Like anything with life, the more you're exposed to it, the easier it becomes. There you go. That's your Takatopi. <laughs> It is, and I, I, I'm, it's a, I'm glad you said my Dakotopi because I very much own that. I was gifted that by Pratik Bairi's wife, who I'd like to give a little shout out to. I adore, I love, the, I love all of them, but the colors of that, there's something about it that encapsulates and captures the spirit of Nepal. And the, the guy on the left there is former South African cricketer, H.D. Ackerman. Mm -hmm. That's at the Under-19 World Cup. Um, I've got to give a big shout out to the broadcast director for that event, uh, Gavin Scavell. He's probably the best cricket director in the world. He's done multiple World Cups. And this was the first day of Nepal's Under-19 World Cup journey this year in January. And it was, I believe, still the first session. You can see there, the 15th, 16th yeah. over of the game. Yeah. And Gav is in my ear. You see there, we have our earpieces. So Gav, the director, is in my ear. And he, he's, we're, we're four or five overs into our stint. He goes, Lenny, Lenny, where's the topi? Where's the, where's the, where's the he wouldn't have known the word topi. Lenny, where's the Nepali hat? I was like, mate, it's in our first session. Can we get into our commentary? And, and he's like, no, no, do it now. No, no time like the present, do it now. So I, I shouted at one of the runners. I said, I'm really sorry, can you get my bag? So they ran out and got my bag and I always carry it. I actually had three on me for that trip because I wanted to gift a couple away. Yeah. And I put it on and I explained to people how to do the, the namaste. That was through the, the commentary camera and bow the head. And I said to HD, and HD is a great sport. He's good mm -hmm. fun. I said, HD, this was then off air at the end of the over on the ad break. Yeah. And I said, shall I, shall I give you one as well? He goes, oh, that'd be a bit of fun, why not? So, and Gav could hear us say that, and Gav in my ear goes, Lenny, give him the thing, halfway through the over, nothing happens, we'll come up to you. <laughs> and then that was it. I just gifted HD Ackerman his topi. Yeah. Uh, it just about fit him, because some of them for, for Western yeah. heads can be a bit small. Yeah. I had to get an extra large one. You look at the size of my head there. Yeah. And he loved it. And I tell you what, he's taken it home, and he's still got it. Beautiful. This was it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, look, that was, I'm pretty sure, February 2020. Yeah. Uh, in your infinite wisdom, you would have set me up to the crowd and said, Lenny, get in there and, mm. and get involved. I was worried for your security, actually. <laughs> and he said, no, it's going to be fine. Just send me the camera and the camera crew. I'm going to take care of it. And I said, like, all right, if you want to take the risk, make uh, sure my camera is okay. <laughs> I, I, I love it up there. There's, a, there's an energy that's so hard to describe and, and the passion and the love the exuberance, and there's a youthful exuberance. Look at the faces there, they're all quite young. You'll tend to get a lot of young people coming along to the games and look at my smile. God, it's broad as the sun. I was loving every second. God knows what the quality of the output was. I doubt you were able to yeah. talk back to me, but look, it's part of the story, isn't it, of Nepal, Nepali cricket. You've got to be up there in the crowd. You've got to feel that energy for yourself. And uh, yeah, I, I love going up there. I think it got a little bit too risky at some recent points, but yeah. hopefully I'll be allowed back again soon. All right, all right mate. Thank you so much. One good hour with, I so wanted to talk to you, interact with you, 
and wanted to share your ideas through my show to the audience. And finally, it happened. And I'm so blessed and happy you're here. How thank, was the experience? Thank brother? you so much for having me. I, I genuinely can't believe it's an hour. I, I thought we were about 40 minutes, 30 minutes in. Yeah. Uh, Dan Devad, it's a pleasure, mate. Keep on doing the great work you're doing. I, just such a, gr a great honor to be able to be here and a privilege, like always in Nepal, to be here anytime I come. I just love it. And it's been great to be able to share my story with you. And this is immense Premier Cup happening and Nepal doing pretty well. Hopefully, we'll lift the cup. Well, I'll tell you something, it's going to be a real amazing story if they can go back to back, make it. It was their first ever Asia Cup last year, those pictures of playing India and Pakistan, there wasn't a dry eye anywhere in Nepal when that happened. I think they've got to back it up. Monty Desai wants more consistency. The T20 format, it's known for its volatility. Ten teams, just one spot for the Asia Cup, three to the Emerging Teams Cup. I think Nepal can do it though. All right, so with that, best wishes to Nepali cricket team, Andrew, me, and entire Nepal Kutta for the best wishes to the Nepali cricket team. Andrew, thank you so much, brother. Thank and you, where are we heading for the drinks now? Well, you tell me, mate. <laughs> I think the first round's on you. All right, I got it. <laughs> I got it, thanks. I'm 
Oh, 